Today we're going to look at monetary policy for NCA Level 3 and how it affects the whole economy in New Zealand. So monetary policy, the general definition of it is what you can see there. It's the control of interest rates, the money supply and the availability of credit to influence the whole economy and particularly aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Um, that, word, that term availability of credit is talking about how easy it is to get loans. Um, which might sound weird, you might think you can get loans pretty easily, but the Reserve Bank is, and the government, are able to control to some extent how easy it is to get loans, and that all impacts on how easy it is to work in the New Zealand economy. So the Reserve Bank is really central to this. It's the central bank of New Zealand. That means it's the banker for the government, and it's the banker for all the other banks. So if you've got money in ANZ or ASB or any of those other banks, they bank with the Reserve Bank. It's down in Wellington um, and they hold the money and when one bank wants to settle with another bank, they do it through the Reserve Bank. So they are, it's a government organisation. Um, as well as doing all these things, they issue notes and coins, they put monetary policy into, into place. And they also supervise the banking system, which means they keep an eye on the banks, make sure that they are not going to fall over, basically, um, so that the New Zealand economy is in a nice, secure place. So we have a policy goal around monetary policy. Um, it's set down in a thing called the Reserve Bank Act 1989. And it makes price stability a key goal for the Reserve Bank um, through monetary policy. Uh, it also makes the Reserve Bank independent of the government, and the reason for that is to avoid the government interfering with monetary policy for political reasons. So, so that they don't go, hey, an election's coming up, let's drop interest rates. They want the Reserve Bank to be able to operate in the best interests of the economy, not necessarily the best interests of the current government. Right, so within the um, Reserve Bank Act, it allows for a thing called a policy target agreement. So that's an agreement between the government in terms of the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Reserve Bank and that sets what price stability goal is. So you'll see um, in NCA exams they often refer to this. That, so we talk about price stability as being one of the main macroeconomic goals in the economy um, but it doesn't mean that prices don't change. The goal at the moment, and it has changed from time to time, is for inflation to be between 1 and 3 percent in the medium term um, with a focus on 2 percent. Right, so that's the goal. So that's the Reserve Bank's target. They have agreed to that. Um, that can change, but at the moment it's not. So why not 0%? Because when an economy is growing, you have some inflation. The demand might be increasing. Um, and so you want to allow for a little bit of inflation. You don't want heaps, but you want to allow for some. Trying to keep it at 0%, trying to keep prices from changing at all, would just hurt the economy. Right, so... As I said, why 3%? Uh, we don't want high inflation above that. Um, the aim is to keep our price rises below that of other countries, and that's basically to keep our exports competitive. We don't want our export prices rising. Remember, exports make up around 30% of our GDP. So we don't want to um, be out-competed by other countries because our prices are increasing too fast. Um, and basically, also, if our prices are increasing more slowly than other countries, then we can undercut them and be more competitive. As well as that, um, you know, low inflation means that it's easy for businesses to plan for the future because prices aren't changing too much. It encourages people to save rather than borrow. Um, if prices are going up quickly, then they, people tend to spend. It also encourages firms to invest in new production instead of speculative investment. So instead of buying houses, so at the moment in Auckland, um, a business might go, why would I possibly invest $100,000 in new machinery when I can put it in a house and earn much better returns? So we want inflation to be low um, so that firms are encouraged to invest in their own business um, and also avoid wage price spirals, which is where um, d workers demand higher wages, so wages go up, so then businesses put their prices up, so then people want higher wages, then prices go up, and so on. So if, pr if prices are stable, then wages tend to be stable, and again, that's better for the economy. So low inflation is better for our exporters, it's better for our businesses, and it's better for people um, in terms of saving. All right, so the key thing, the key tool for the Reserve Bank is a thing called the official cash rate. 
and they come out with a big announcement every six weeks that economist type people follow um, as to what's going to happen to the official cash rate. It's basically an interest rate that the Reserve Bank charges other banks for their deposits or loans, plus or minus a quarter of a percent. Um, in, in a nutshell, it sets a benchmark for interest rates um, in New Zealand. If they put the official cash rate up, interest rates usually go up. If they put the official cash rate down, interest rates usually go down. Do be clear that when we say interest rates here, we are talking about not just interest rates on loans, but also interest rates on deposits. So it goes across the board. So this is how it works. Basically, suppose banks can borrow an unlimited amount of money from the Reserve Bank. Suppose it was at 6%. That's the same as they borrow money from us in terms of our deposits. So they're not going to be prepared to pay interest of more than that to us as customers because they can already get all they want at 6%, so maybe they'll be prepared to um, borrow money from us where they put and pay us 4%. At the same time, if banks banks can lend as much as they want to the Reserve Bank at 6% with no risk, then they're going to want to charge the public um, more than 6% because we're a, higher, a greater risk than the Reserve Bank. Um, as I said before, in a nutshell, if the official cash rate goes up, then lien and deposit rates go up, and if the official cash rate goes down, then interest rates will fall. So let's look at an example of why that's important. So they use interest rates through the official cash rate to try to influence economic activity and control the pressures on inflation. It's not a perfect science, um, but generally it's been found to work. Um, higher interest rates, so if they put the official cash rate up, it means the cost of borrowing goes up for both firms and consumers. So think about um, your parents probably if they've got a mortgage, if interest rates go up, they suddenly have to pay more money to the banks. That means they have less money to spend on other things. Um, or if they were thinking about borrowing, now they might not do it after all. If you were thinking about borrowing for a car or something like that. So consumers are put off spending. At the same time, firms are in the same boat. If they've got loans already, they suddenly find they have to pay more to the banks and have less to spend on other things. Um, and if they were thinking about borrowing to invest, they may be put off by the higher interest rates. So for both firms and consumers, they will borrow less and spend less. So think about that in terms of aggregate demand. That's C for consumer spending and I for investment. At the same time, the higher interest rates attract foreign investors looking for the best returns for their money. So they want to put their money in the New Zealand economy, and that means they need New Zealand dollars, so they demand New Zealand dollars, and that pushes our exchange rate up. Now that has the effect of making imports cheaper and making exports less competitive. So what does this do? So we've got aggregate demand falling because consumer spending is down and investment spending is down, and because exports are less competitive, so our export receipts go down because of the higher exchange rate. Okay, so in terms of NCA, make sure you understand those three effects. You need to understand that exchange rate effect. I'm not gonna go into more detail here, so go back to your notes, but um, those three effects on aggregate demand are significant. So consumer spending, investment spending, and export. So the only thing not affected really is government spending. So that's a big effect. At the same time, that higher exchange rate does make imports cheaper, so that means imported materials will be cheaper. Um, so aggregate supply will increase a bit because costs for businesses fall. Think about things like oil um, and machinery that they want to import that's got a bit cheaper. So costs are lower, aggregate supply will increase. So there's a double effect, and here it is here. So you'll see aggregate supply is increasing, aggregate demand falling. Aggregate demand will be the bigger effect, and that's because so much of the economy is affected by this, um, with consumer spending, investment spending, and exports all falling. So generally we will get, on the bottom axis, real GDP falling, and that is typically what we expect. Higher interest rates are a contractionary policy, they slow the economy down, it's like putting your foot on the brake of the economy. So aggregate demand falls. At the same time, we've got some increase in aggregate supply because um, of those lower import costs. And the overall effect, so we get Y to Y dash, which means we have a fall in economic growth. Um, and on the vertical axis, we have price level falling from PL to PL dash. 
So that suggests prices are under control um, if, and potentially the price level could even be decreasing. So that will obviously mean inflationary um, pressures are lower, prices are less likely to increase and so price stability is achieved. Well that's the theory anyway. Okay, so how would you explain this in terms of the circular flow model? This has come up in NCA before. So we're talking about higher interest rates, so that you would need to talk about it in terms of the flows. So you could talk about interest on loans, more going from households to the financial institutions. You could talk about less consumer spending as a result. You could talk about less investment spending as a result, or less desire for producers to have investment loans. Um, as a result of that, we've got less goods and services being produced and as a result of that lower demand less pressure on prices to increase at the same time we've got less money coming through in terms of export receipts which also means less demand we you could go on and say we've got less income going from producers to households um, if export receipts are down that again means less demand and less pressure on prices so it's a funny thing um, there's no mention of prices on the circular flow diagram but this has come up as I said in the NCA before so you need to explain it in terms of lower demand for goods and services and therefore less pressure on prices to increase oh, so flip there um, the opposite effect occurs if the economy is doing poorly and so interest rates are cut so if they're not worried about inflation or if they are worried about economic growth, the Reserve Bank will cut interest rates. The effects are exactly the opposite. So if lower interest rates occur, that encourages people to borrow. It means that people with mortgages have more money to spend because they are paying less interest to the banks. Firms can borrow more easily with low interest rates um, and therefore investment spending will increase. And at the same time, the exchange rate should drop if we have low interest rates which encourages export. So all boosts aggregate demand and again would get a decrease in aggregate supply. Um, and in fact we'd get that would generate some inflation which is actually what they want if they lower interest rates. Make sure you understand that because at the moment in mid 2016 we actually have low interest rates. So that's poss more quite possibly what would come up in an NCA exam and in fact they're forecast to get lower by the end of this year. It's a weird thing at the moment. In 2016, we have an economy that's grown around 2.5%, which is okay, but low inflation. Now, there's some reasons for that. The rest of the world isn't doing that well, so there's less pressure on prices from overseas for prices to increase here. We've got technology is really throwing a spanner in the works. Inflation isn't growing as fast because costs are falling as productivity rises, but that's a different issue again. So just so you're aware, make sure you under, you can reverse your explanations and explain why interest rate, lower interest rates should impact on the economy and cause economic growth and actually create some inflation to keep us within that 1 to 3%. At the time of this recording, inflation is actually at about 0.8%. It's below 1%, and even though we've got interest rates at a record low. Um, so that's something for the Reserve Bank to work on. All right, that's me. Enjoy.